Hello. Today I will show you how to create the ASK and Matrix effect for your camera video using OpenCV and MediaPipe libraries. Let's start with a short plan of what we are going to do. First we will prepare the video setup for our camera. Next we will create the ASK effect. After that we will remove the background and the frame rate counter and we will finish by creating the matrix effect for our background. Let's go into the code. We will start by preparing the video setup. It's very basic so I will explain only the main parts. First we need to import the OpenCV library, make sure to install it. Next we need to initiate the video capture. Most of the time your camera will be auto detected using only zero and that should be enough. Next, knowing that video is just a bunch of images or frames, we need the while loop to go through them. We write while true and init underscore comma frame equal to cap dot read. It will read all our frames. Next, let's make a copy of the frame and name it result. To show it, we write cv2 dot I'm show and in brackets we add window name result and what we want to display, it will be result. What's left is to add a couple of lines which will help us close the window and stop the code. We add if condition to close the window when the escape button is pressed. If the condition is true, it will break the loop. And we finish by destroying all windows. Let's move to the next part. In this part, we will create the ASK effect for our camera video. We will need a new library in NumPy. Make sure to install it. Let's import it as NP for short. Next, let's check our frames width and height. Let's comment the while loop and run the code. Ok, we have 640 by 480 pixels. It's a default size in OpenCV. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We can uncomment the while loop and comment the print statement. So if we need to change the frame size, first we need to define the new width and height. Let's make it 800 and 600 pixels. And now we can set the new frame size. We set the new width and the new height. Ok, now we can start with the ASK effect. What we are going to do is we will divide our frame into cells and for each cell we will display the ASCII character. We will prepare ASCII characters representing the illumination from darkest to brightest. So from the original frame we will get the illumination values for our cells, we will assign these values to the responding ASCII characters and display them in the cells. Ok, let's start. It will make more sense when we will do it. First, let's define the cell size, width and height. Let's make it 10 by 15 pixels. Next, let's calculate our new frame size with the new cell size and assign to the new dimensions variable. A cell is like a bigger pixel in which we will display the ASCII character. Next, we can define our ASCII chars from darkest to brightest. What else we need is the normalization parameter. We will convert the image to the grayscale and extract the gray value. It will represent the illumination, but these values can be from 0 to 255 and we have only 13 ASCII characters. So we need to have a coefficient to normalize this range, making it from 0 to 12, 13 positions. So we divide 255 by Charles length. Ok, what's next we will need is the font. We will use Hershey simplex and font size, let's make it 0 0.4. Now we can start with a function where all the magic will happen. I named it matrix and it will have one input, image, it will be our frame. Ok, so what we need to do is to create an empty black image, we will draw our ASCII chars, convert the frame's image into the gray image and assign and put the ASCII char according to the image brightness. First, let's prepare the background. Let's name it matrix window. We'll use the numpy zeros function and define the new frame size, height and width. What we also need to do is to make the matrix window global, because we will want to display it outside this function. 
and we are doing it in my main while loop. Ok, next let's resize the image to the new dimensions so that for each pixel we could assign the ASCII chart and make the image grey. Next we need to go through all the grey image pixels and get the grey value or intensity. So we will need two for loops, one in the range of new height and the other in the range of new width. And then we extract the intensity value. Knowing this value, we normalize it to get the ASCII chart index. Make sure to have the integer type. Also, we can extract the color. We will extract from small image, which has all BJR color values. We can extract BJR color channels separately. What's left is to get the ASCII chart using the calculated ASCII chart index and to display it. To get ASCII char, we write char equal to chars, and in square brackets, we write char index. And we display the char using OpenCV put text method. We define the window char where we want to display it font, font size, color, and font thickness. For coordinates, we need to multiply j times cell width and i times cell height because we extracted intensity and color values from the small image and we are displaying on the normal one. Also, I centered the text by adding 5 to width and 12 to height. Ok, so what's left is to call this function in the main while loop. The input image will be the result, and what we want to show will be the matrix window. We can run the code. Ok, we can see in the ASCII video that the darkest cells have no character at all, and characters has the original image color. A good example is the Rubik's Cube. To get a more matrix look, let's leave only the green color channel and then comment on unused lines. Let's run the code again. Now it looks more like matrix. I'm wearing a white t-shirt so it is the brightest. But if I bring the brighter light source, the background will look darker. Let's move to the next part, we will remove the background. In this part, as the name says, we will remove the background. Removing the background is very easy, we just need the right library to do it. For that, we will use the MediaPipe library. But we will import the selfie segmentation model using the CVZone library, so make sure to install these two libraries. So from CVZone.selfie segmentation model, we import selfie segmentation. Next, we need to create a selfie segmentation object. Let's write segmenter equal to selfie segmentation and in brackets we need to define the model. It can be the general model or landscape model. Let's try the landscape model. We type 1. We are going to use our created segmenter in the matrix function after we resize the image. Let's write small image equal to segmenter dot remove bg and in brackets we define small image and what color we need for our background. Let's make it black as our matrix window. And that's it. We can run the code. Ok, the background is removed. Let's move to the next part. In this part, we will calculate and display the frame rate. Because we don't use threading or multiprocessing, it would be great to check at what frame rate our code runs. Because good looking effect require a lot of calculation and it will lead to a laggy result. If it still happens, you can try increasing the cell size or changing the frame width and height to lower. Ok, so what we need for a start is the time library. Let's import it. You don't need to install it, it's a default Python library. Next, let's define some starting values, frames per second start time and frames per second. As you can guess, we will calculate the time the program needs to display one frame and then we will calculate how many frames it can show in a second, which will be our frame rate. So let's create a new function called frame rate. The input will be the start time. First, let's make the frames per second start time global. Next, we can get frames per second end time, which is equal to time dot time. After that, we can calculate the difference, convert it to frame rate, and assign the frames per second start time to the frames per second end time to reset for the next calculation. 
What's select is to display the frame rate. Let's create a frames per second text variable and assign it to the frames per second value with one decimal point and display the frames per second text in the top left corner in pink color. We finish by calling the frame rate in the main while loop. Let's see the result. It's about 20. Not great, but not bad too. If you have a laggy output, try increasing cell size or lowering frame dimensions. In the last part, we will create a matrix effect for our background. There are multiple cool matrix effects we could create, but they require a lot of computations, so we'll try to balance between a good frame rate and good looking effect. First, we'll need to import a random model from random library. This library is already included with Python, so no need to install anything. Let's move to the matrix function and see what we need to do. Okay, so now we have only green color for the selfie and our segmented background we made black. So if you want to display something for the background, you can display it where we have black color. Let's add the if condition, stating that if color 1 is equal to 0, we run the matrix background function with the input of the position in the frame i and j. Else we display what we had before. Ok, so let's move up and create the matrix background function with position inputs. Let's display a random 0 or 1 for the background. First, let's create a random matrix text variable, assign it to the randint and in brackets add 0 and 1. So it will choose randomly one input. Next, let's display it on matrix window. Make sure to convert matrix text to string type and position we get by multiplying j times cell width and i times cell height. Next, we add a font, font size, color green and font scale 1. Let's test it. Ok, it works but doesn't look very good. Let's improve that by making it move down in a continuous loop. For that, we need a new variable font speed. We will add it in the matrix background function where the y coordinate is. So every time the function is called, the position of the chair will move down. Ok, now we need to add this incrementation where we are calling the function. First, let's add font speed to global variables. Second, let's add an if condition to not go outside the frame height and if it goes, reset to starting position. So font speed becomes 0 again. And third, we add the font speed incrementation of 1. So every frame the background will move down by 1 pixel. Let's run and see the result. Ok, it moves but the color seems too bright. Let's change it. Instead of 255, let's add 120 minus i times 3. So the color will go darker the lower the position of the chart will be. We have 40 lines so we won't get negative values. Let's run the code now. Now it looks good and the frame rate is acceptable. Let's tweak the color a little bit by adding the blue color. We created the Ask Matrix effect for our camera video. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. You will find the code in the video description. If you liked this video, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more Python videos.